Hi, welcome to another Path Logos tutorial on YouTube. I'm Dr. Alik Verma and this video is on multiple myeloma. Let's see what the content of today's lecture are. We'll start from the origin of the term multiple myeloma. Then we'll discuss few terminologies like what are plasma cells, what is a secretor or non-secretor, what is MGUS and smoldering myelomas. After we understand those, we'll move on to the pathogenesis and what are the clinical features you see in a patient of multiple myeloma. For better understanding, this whole lecture is divided into three parts. Part 1 that is the video will focus on all the terminologies and the precursor lesions of multiple myeloma. Second part will include multiple myeloma, its pathogenesis and clinical features. And part C will include the diagnosis and treatment. So please make sure you see all the three parts A, B, C for better understanding and complete knowledge of the topic. Hope you like it. Myeloma is formed by a combination of two words. One is oma, which means tumor, and other is mulose. Mulose is the Greek term for marrow. So multiple myeloma is the cancer of blood cells which are found in the marrow. And what are those blood cells? They're called as plasma cells. Now the question arises, why is it called multiple? Because it involves multiple patches or areas of bone. Before I move forward to pathogenesis, let me discuss you about few important terms that you must know for better understanding of the topic. The terms we'll discuss are what's the plasma cell, M protein, Benz Jones protein, what is a secretor, non secretor, what is monoclonal gamma pathy of unknown significance, and what is smoldering myelomas. First, we'll discuss what is a plasma cell. The lymphocytes are of two types T cells and B cells. Both are formed in the marrow, but the T cells move to the thymus for further development. The B cells stay in the marrow and they differentiate to form plasma cells. The function of plasma cells is to secrete antibodies, which could be either IgM, immunoglobin G or IgG antibodies. Now you know the function of plasma cells and their origin from B cells. Let's see how do they look. When defining morphology of plasma cells, the plasma cells have an eccentric nucleus, that is the nucleus is not placed centrally, with a coarse cartwheel chromatin, have an amphiphilic cytoplasm, which is it stains with both acidic and basic dye, and it has a perinuclear half that represents abundant Golgi zone within the plasma cells. Now, there's a question for you guys. There is another cell which looks pretty similar in the bone marrow and can be confused easily with a plasma cell. What is that cell? I'll tell you the answer at the end of the video. Before I move on to the next slide, I would also like to mention that the above mentioned morphological features are seen in benign and normal plasma cells. These features could be present or may be lost in the neoplastic plasma cells as in the case of multiple myeloma, which I'll further mention when we move on to the diagnosis. So it's the monoclonal proliferation of these plasma cells seen in multiple myeloma. Now what is monoclonal? Um, normally in an immunoglobin, there are light chains of immunoglobin, which has either kappa or lambda as the light chain. And there is often a ratio maintained between the two. When the body secretes only kappa or lambda, means it is now monoclonal and the plasma cells are malignant. The percentage of plasma cells in a marrow is less than 3%. The percentage will obviously increase in plasma cell dyskrasias. They may also increase in other non-neoplastic conditions like uh, filarias, liver disease and diabetes etc. But again the plasma cells in these conditions would be polyclonal and not monoclonal because monoclonality will only be seen in plasma cell neoplasias. Now the next term that we'll discuss is M protein. What, so what's an M protein? We all know that immunoglobulins are protein and a malignant plasma cell secretes a monoclonal immunoglobulin. 
and these monoclonal immunoglobulins which are identified in the blood is referred to as M protein in reference to the term myeloma M for myeloma also they are also called M protein in reference to the M band or spike formed in electrophoresis of proteins seen in cases of multiple myeloma. This is a normal protein electrophoresis pattern where the peak is formed by albumin on the left being the most abundant plasma protein and on the extreme right you see a small bump made by gamma globulins or immunoglobulins because of the low concentration. Now, in case of increase in number of plasma cells, the small bump will increase in size and will form a spike in case of monoclonal increase in the immunoglobulins in plasma cell neoplasm and which will appear as somewhat an imaginary M, hence called as the M spike. Now, these immunoglobulins are seen in blood since they are larger in size and they do not cross the kidneys, hence cannot be seen in urine electrophoresis. It's only later in the disease when there's a damage to the kidneys that you see an M spike in the urine electrophoresis as well. The other term we'll discuss is Benz-Jones protein. Now what are Benz-Jones protein? They're free light chains that are excreted in urine. An antibody comprises of heavy chains and light chains and Benz-Jones proteins are the free light chains that are excreted in urine. As you can see in the example, the light chain could be kappa light chain or a lambda light chain but it will only be one either kappa or either lambda as previously mentioned because they are monoclonal with time now with time they keep on accumulating and because of being of smaller molecular weight as compared to the immunoglobulins these free light chains can easily cross the kidney and are excreted in urine as and as we'll see later that the that the, that these light chains are actually toxic to the renal tubular cells and cause damage and lead to myeloma kidney so so benz jones proteins were described by henry benz jones in 1847 and they are free light chains that are excreted in urine the normal ratio of kappa lambda in normal patient is 2 is to 1 and if the ratio increase or decrease, it indicates malignant neoplasm. If you increase only kappa, obviously the ratio will increase. And if you uh, release only lambda light chains, the ratio will obviously decrease. Because they have less molecular weight and hence can easily pass the glomeruli. The next we'll discuss is about what are secretors and non-secretors in a case of multiple myeloma. So you know that the plasma cells secrete immunoglobulins of free light chains and rarely heavy chains and they are called as secretors. So secretor are neoplastic malignant cells in plasma cell secretes immunoglobulins, free light chains or rarely heavy chains and they are called as secretors. And the good news about the secretors is that for monitoring the response to treatment, you can measure the previously mentioned immunoglobulins or light chains in urine or blood by serum or urine protein electrophoresis or doing a free light chain assay. As previously mentioned. But the bad news about the secretors is that they have more manifestations than non-secretors. The immunoglobulins are light chains that were being secreted and that we can measure as a good news. It can cause damage to the kidneys and lead to myeloma kidneys or it can also lead to secretion of A light chains and lead to amyloid kidney and when the kidneys are damaged it can affect uh, the release of erythropoietin and it can progress to anemia. It, these light chains can bind to the platelets and lead to platelet abnormalities. These light chains can uh, bind to each other and uh, in the blood and tissues and make the blood hyperviscous and lead to hyperviscosities. They can also bind to the coagulation factors and lead to various coagulation abnormalities. Now what is a non-secretor? A non-secretor is one which do not secrete either immunoglobulins or free light chains or any heavy chains. So whatever a secretor was secreting, a non-secretor doesn't secrete that. And the non-secretor thus have a good news that they have very few manifestation and are statistically proven they have more chances of survival as compared to the secretors. So all the bad things that the secretor will manifest 
won't be seen in a non secreter but the bad news for the non secreter but the bad news for the non secreter is that you cannot measure the response to treatment uh, that you could easily do in a secreter what you now have to rely is that you have to go and invade the site where the tumor is formed that is you do a bone marrow biopsy which is co- invasive and quite discomforting for the patient studies have also shown that you can also measure the response by doing a periodic ct or mri to look for the osteolytic lesions whether their number decreased or increased following therapy the next term that we learn is what is monoclonal gamma pathy of unknown significance MGUS or monoclonal gamma pathy of unknown significance can be described as a very pre-neoplastic lesion that may progress to multiple myelomas. Now what actually happens and how we identify it is that your blood has M protein and but the M protein is in decreased concentration and this M protein is produced by malignant plasma cell as all of you know but the plasma cells are also decreased in number. and therefore there are no symptoms now what you would do when you uh, identify a patient of mgus and you no- normally get those patients in in screening which occurs due to some unknown reasons you have to keep a check or you have to monitor those patients that is you don't uh, require any treatment but you require a constant check or monitoring because one person of these mgus patients may progress to multiple myeloma So MGUS the M protein is less than 3 grams per deciliter the plasma cells in the marrow is less than 10% the normal marrow count of plasma cells was around 3% the marrow the plasma cells in MGUS is less than 10% and obviously they have no clinical features or no crab features like um, hypercalcemia renal failure anemia or bone lytic lesions the next term that we learn is smoldering myelomas Smoldering myelomas is the term which is intermediate uh, of um, in between or in in between between MGUS and multiple myelomas, and in this also has a serum monoclonal protein which is more than three grams per deciliters, which is more than MGUS which had less than three. Also, the clonal marrow plasma cells is again more than ten percent and it would be around sixty percent even. in these cases patients also the there are no systemic symptoms and there is absence of uh, crab features or there is absence of amyloidosis but these patients generally have a higher risk of progression to multiple myelomas and therefore they also required monitoring so smoldering myelomas is intermediate between mgus and multiple myeloma so and before finishing the part a of uh, discussion of multiple myeloma I would like to answer the question that I asked previously that was which another cell looks pretty similar in the bone marrow especially in a bone marrow aspirate and can be confused with a plasma cell the answer of which is an osteoblast an osteoblast also has an eccentric nucleus and the nucleus in these cases is actually ex- extruding uh, outside from the uh, cell boundaries it's actually pouting outside the they also have a half but the half is away from the nucleus and it's called as a paranuclear half you know the half which was a lighter area which contained golgi zone the half in these cases is paranuclear it's away while in plasma cell the half was perinuclear this image also shows uh, many of uh, 1 2 3 4 osteoblast they also have an ex- uh, extremely eccentric nucleus and there you can also see by the arrow that there is a paranuclear half and thus these are also osteoblast um my next slide or my next uh, video will be about multiple myelomas here is a glimpse that i'll show that i that uh, i'll show you now hope you like the video uh, subscribe like and comment and please uh, keep a watch on the next video which will be released pretty soon thank you